back with you once again. And my goodness, did President Obama find himself in the midst of, of a birth control controversy last week, of, of all things? I don't know that he really thought that this would be tremendously controversial, but who was it? Uh, as Obama launched an edict or had a plan to uh, force Catholic hospitals to pay for birth control for their employees. And as a lot of us know, the Catholic faith is not real big on birth control, not, not something they're in favor of, so you can see the conflict. And for all week there's a big discussion over can a, uh, you know, can, can a government force a religion to do something that is against their own teachings. And Obama later in the week came out with what he called a compromise and what those who, who are behind him consider a compromise in that he's, he's no longer going to force the Catholic Church to pay for these uh, birth controls for their employees. No, no, no. No, they're not going to have to do that. Instead, he's going to make the insurance companies do it. So at the end of the day, he's still forcing a third party to pay for somebody else's birth control. Eek! Now, throughout this week, as, as different Democratic pundits and assorted feminists and talking heads and whatever have come out on TV discussing this hot button issue, uh, it has been amazing to me the tact that they have taken when discussing the right's opposition to this, uh, the Republicans opposition to this, the conservatives opposition to this, and this, this is surprising even to me. I'm, I mean, I'm used to, uh, I'm used to hearing Democrats stretch the truth, I'm used to hearing liberals stretch the truth, but dadgum, their reactions to us this week and our opposition to this have been nothing short of flat-out lies. I mean, every time you turn around, there's some Democratic talking head on television talking about how, oh, the Republicans are against birth control. Oh, they want to end all birth control. Or, oh, the Republicans are against women's health. God help us all. The Republicans, the right, are against women's health. Now, come on. That's bad even for you. That, that's over the line even for you guys. So, uh, so the Republicans are against birth control, huh? I would like somebody to point out to me, I would like somebody to show me, where in the midst of this debate any Republican has publicly stated that they are in favor of outlawing birth control of any type. I've not heard that anywhere. I, I must have missed that one. I don't remember anyone coming out on the steps of Congress in front of a microphone and saying, Ah, my fellow Americans, we must end all birth control. Sorry, I, I didn't hear that sound like. Didn't hear that. So, uh, the, the Democratic cries of Republicans want to end birth control is absolute hogwash. Now, are there possibly some individual Republicans somewhere who feel that way? Uh, probably, might be. And, and I, don't, uh, I don't necessarily castigate them for it. They have every right, every right to that opinion. Uh, it seems to me to be a, a logical political position to take. You know, whether you agree with it or not, but in terms of the large scale group, in terms of the large scale Republican caucus or conservative caucus coming out strictly in favor of banning birth control, it hasn't happened. So uh, you're, you're giving us, you and the left are giving us a little bit more credit for that than we might deserve. We've never really taken that position. Likewise, are Republicans against women's health? No, not at all. What you're seeing in that argument is something that the left has done for. Uh, several decades now where they, they look upon childbearing and they look upon childbirth as just kind of sort of a random medical act like waking up in the morning with the sniffles or accidentally tripping down the stairs and breaking your leg. You know, it's like, oh, I just woke up one morning and I was pregnant. Well, um, I don't know about y'all. Uh, it, it's been quite a while since I had that whole birds and bees discussion with the parents, but by my recollection, um, childbirth doesn't accidentally happen. There's kind of a particular activity that you have to be involved in in order to facilitate that. I won't go any further, but point being, this isn't just some random health issue that suddenly pops up. But yet, the Democrats would like everybody to believe that Oh, well, just anybody can get pregnant at any time is taking the concept of the idea of sex totally out of it. That they just assume people are randomly having sex. Maybe they're randomly having sex, but the rest of America isn't. We have other things to do. And uh, thinking that, well, people can just randomly get pregnant. Oh, come on. That's horse, that's horse hockey. Now, calling birth control a preventative part of women's health 
is about as asinine as calling detox a significant part of preventative health for the American people. You would never do that. I mean, there's, there are some Americans who are addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, or whatever. But it would be asinine to say, hey, you know, we need to have some other group pay for all of the detox for everybody else who needs it. Or, or even everybody else who just wants it. Hey, you want some detox? Go have it. Have it on the insurance companies. Or have it on the Catholic Church. Or have it on your employer or somebody. That would be ludicrous. Drug addiction is the result of one person's choices. I would say negative choices, but I, I, one person's choices. And as such, it really shouldn't be up to anyone else to be forced to facilitate their recovery from those bad choices. Just like birth control. If you want to take the risk of having sex, buy your own birth control. Is that too much to ask? I mean, really. It's not as though birth control is difficult to come by in 2012. It's not as though birth control is particularly expensive in 2012. I mean, heaven forbid, for, for, for sake of discussion, for sake of discussion, let's say I went down to the local watering hole one night and I ran into a uh, lovely young maiden, shall we say, and I determined, discussion purposes only, I, dis I determined that it would be worthwhile uh, to take this lovely young maiden back to my place and uh, get to know her intimately, shall we say. Now, between the local watering hole and my house would be any number of places that I could stop and obtain the proper um, birth control, if you will. And it wouldn't be all that expensive to do so. Now, granted, I know I'm a guy. It's different for me than it is a girl. Granted, women have a little bit more they have to go through, but still, it's not that tough to do. There's clinics all over the place. There's free clinics that do this stuff. Birth control pills or whatever other method you want to use, it's not real hard to come by. It's not terribly expensive. You're not buying a condo. And it strikes me that if you are the type of person, male, female, whatever, if you are the type of person that cannot afford birth control, then maybe you're not the type of person that should be having sexual relations at that point in your life anyway. I mean, if you can't afford birth control, then can you really afford to take on the risk that you're taking with this behavior, whether you're male or female? No, I wouldn't think so. If you're not mature enough to have put yourself in a position where you can afford said birth control, then are you really mature enough to be having some kind of sexual relationship anyway? No, I wouldn't think so. And I'm not even talking about this in terms of, of a moral argument or a religious argument. Heck, I'm leaving that to the side. I'm saying just in terms of being able to take care of yourself, if you can't take care of the potential risk that comes along with a sexual relationship, maybe you shouldn't be having sex. I'm just saying. Is, is that that controversial? Is that idea that out of the mainstream right now? Jeez, I hope not. Now, in spite of all this, in spite of what should be a common sense argument against Obama's original plan and his so-called compromise, every day we still see feminists on television talking about how there is a need for free birth control to be provided for women. It's, it's a woman's right to birth control. I don't recall reading that in the Constitution, but okay, they're saying there's a woman's right to it. They're saying that somebody somewhere, be it the government or an employer or an insurance company or the Catholic Church or whoever, Somebody somewhere should pay for their birth control. Now let me get this straight. Let me make sure that I'm understanding their argument here. They are telling me that they are going to be going out there and having sex. May not like that, but okay, they're going to do it. They're telling me that they're going to go out there and have sex, and that somebody somewhere should be remunerating them for that act. Somebody somewhere should be giving them something, in this case their birth control, giving them something that they would not have otherwise because they're out there having sex. Correct me if I'm wrong, but by definition, doesn't that make you a whore? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure by definition having sex and getting something in remuneration for it is, is, is pretty much making you a whore. Or Kim Kardashian, but probably a whore. Now, I know a lot of you women out there are, are listening to this and jumping up and down and screaming and throwing stuff at your computer monitor and whatever else. Let me be clear. Those of you ladies out there who are out there working for a living and, and you're 
using your money to purchase your birth control of whatever method or you know, you're in a relationship and you guys pooling your resources together, you're spending your money on whatever birth control you use. I'm not talking about you. I'm not calling you a whore. Whether I agree or disagree with what you're doing personally, in a political sense, I couldn't care less. Whatever. Who I am specifically talking to here are the women out there who think that somebody else in society should be footing the bill for your birth control. You get to have the fun and somebody else has to pay for it. I'm sorry, that makes you a whore. Now, if we understand that these so-called ladies, I'm using that term very loosely, that these ladies who are wanting someone else to pay for their birth control and therefore are whores, assuming that we accept that, what would it then say about the person who is, shall we say, facilitating the payment to these ladies? The person who is facilitating the birth control to be, uh, or the, the money for the birth control to be taken from one entity, be it an insurance company, Catholic church, whatever, facilitating the transfer of these resources from one group of people to these whores. What would we call that person? President Obama, for example. What would we call a person who facilitated that transaction from one party to the whore for her sexual activity? I believe by the last dictionary I saw that we would refer to that as a pimp. Which then means that, at least in this case, President Barack Obama is a pimp. Pimp pay the hoes! Oh boy! Oh boy! I mean, I know that the 2008 presidential campaign slogan was hope and change. I wonder if 2012's campaign slogan is going to be keeping the pimp hand strong. Oh my goodness! I, I, I think back to a think back to an old Ice Cube song to, to kind of borrow a line from that. Uh, I saw the lights on the Goodyear blimp and it said Obama's a pimp. Please, someone Photoshop that for me. I'm, I'm begging someone to do a Photoshop of the Goodyear blimp with that in writing underneath it. Obama's a pimp. I, that will positively go viral, I'm telling you. The bottom line is you have heard me several times on this show in different topics, different cases, talk about the idea that the 2012 presidential election, the, dividing, the division we have in our country, that that division is not between rich and poor. That division is not even really between Republicans and Democrats, not entirely. Not even entirely between conservatives and liberals. Really, the division in our nation right now is between producers and parasites. You've heard me use that term a lot. Producers versus parasites. And in my mind, this last week, whether Obama is expecting the Catholic Church to pay for birth control, or expecting insurance companies to pay for birth control, or expecting somebody somewhere to pay for birth control, surprise he hasn't Ask the 1% to pay for the birth control yet. I probably shouldn't give him any ideas. Nevertheless, this whole idea that he's launching is to me one of the most egregious cases of appealing directly to the parasites and trying to victimize the producers, just like he's done on practically every other topic during his administration. He's telling the parasites, go have all the illicit sex you want I'll get the producers to pay for it. So that's what this is about now. That's all you got left. That's all the Democrats have left. They can't run on the economy. They can't run on the hopey, changey, feel-good stuff. They can't run on the, the, the rainbows and unicorns of last time. They have to run on, you can have all the sex you want, and I'll make someone else pay for it. That's really all you got left, huh? My God, are you people desperate. But... Who do you want in the White House? A pimp who's going to ruin the economy? Or someone who's going to get this nation back on track? I think you know what the answer is. This is America's evil genius. I ain't got no love for hoes. And we'll see you next week.